close your eyes and watch your breath. Put down all your other thoughts of things outside, affairs outside, and look at what you're doing inside. We spend too much time listening to the news of what other people are doing and not paying enough attention to the news of what our own minds are doing. And yet it's our own minds that are shaping our lives. We have to look into them to make sure they're reliable. Like right now, if you sit down to meditate, make up your mind you, you want to stay here. Make that a promise to yourself, and then see how well you can keep that promise. It's like taking the precepts just now. We're not asking for anything from anyone. We're actually making a promise to ourselves that we will abide by these precepts as ways of making sure that our behavior stays in line with what we really want, i.e. behavior that's skillful, that doesn't harm anybody, doesn't harm ourselves, doesn't harm other people. And it's up to us to be true to ourselves to follow through with that. Because we live in this world, what do we have to depend on? We've got this body, but we can depend on it only for so long. At some point we're going to have to throw it away. We want to make sure that we can learn how to depend on our minds, because they're the things that are shaping our lives now and on into the future. As for the body, basically think of it as a piece of fruit. You want to squeeze the juice out of it, another squeeze goodness out of the body. For most of us, we live our lives trying to squeeze pleasure out of the body. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, we try to squeeze as much pleasure as we can out of them. You know, the juice they give is pretty is pretty weak. It's strong for a few seconds, then it's gone. Whereas we try to squeeze goodness out of the body in terms of generosity, virtue, and meditation. That's a juice that lasts for a long time. It can nourish us for a long time. So think of the body as a tool that you're going to use. You're born with this body. You're going to have it for a while, and then you have to throw it away. And don't throw it away like a piece of fruit that still has a lot of juice in it that happens to get thrown out. That's a waste. Squeeze all the goodness you can out of it, so that when time, the time comes to go, there's nothing left to be concerned about, nothing left to be nostalgic about or to worry about, or to think, gee, I could have gotten more out of this. Get as much goodness as you can out of the body. And you do that by making promises that the mind is going to learn how to depend on itself, because that's what carries on. And if you can't depend on yourself, who can you depend on? So we make promises to ourselves to do good, then it's up to us to maintain those promises to keep them. It's in this way that we, as the Buddha said, go brightly. We come into this world, some of us come in darkness, he said, some of us come in brightness. Darkness or brightness in terms of how comfortable our lives are, how much wealth we have, how much educational opportunities we have, how much intelligence we have. But how we come is not as nearly as important as how we go. And how we go depends on our actions now. How we come depends on our actions in previous lifetimes, but now we're shaping our lives for the future. So you want to make sure you go in brightness. In other words, you go with virtue, you go with generosity, you go with meditation. Instead of going in darkness with no virtue, no generosity, no meditation to help you along. So squeeze the goodness you can out of the body while you've got it. This is a basic principle of heedfulness. We've got these good opportunities, try to make the most of them. Because it's not the case we'll have them forever. But we have them now. So get what goodness you can out of the body. Because it's the goodness that you get to take with you. <laughs>